and welcome to today's webinar. Today's webinar is product presentations from Up a Baby and Safe Traffic Systems. And again, the webinar today is brought to you by State Farm and Safe Kids. Well, our objectives for today are to learn about the companies that manufacture the products, to review the functionality of products offered in the marketplace, to learn about existing and new features of familiar products, and to learn about new products and their features and benefits, functionality, and purposes. And we are very excited to have two great speakers on with us today. First, we have Vera Fullaway. Vera has an extensive history in the child restraint industry where she's worked as a technical consultant, consumer and customer relations manager, product trainer, CPS advocate, She's led the state of Colorado CPS program as the technical training coordinator for over 12 years, was awarded the NHTSA Public Service Award and served on the National Child Passenger Safety Board. And her current position since 2004 is at Safe Traffic System as the regulatory compliance officer and customer service manager. And then we also have on the call with us today, Daniela Brown. Um, Daniela is a parent of three young children. Child safety is of utmost significance to Daniela and she has been a child passenger safety technician since 2008 and an instructor since 2014. She also recently joined the National CPS Board as the child restraint seat manufacturer representative. And her extensive engineering knowledge and passion for communicating and educating parents, caregivers, and safety experts about the importance of child passenger safety makes Daniela an integral part of the Up a Baby team. So we are very excited to have both of these speakers with us today. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Vera. Thank you very much and welcome everyone. Thank you for spending your next hour with us and we hope that it's gonna be nice and informative for you. Again, my name is Vera, I am with Safe Traffic System. For those of you that are not familiar with our product, I'm gonna give you a very brief overview. We are a privately owned company that's housed, that, that is located in Chicago, Illinois. We're actually in Franklin Park, right across the street from O'Hare Airport. And we've been there for a very long time. We started researching how children are restrained in motor vehicles in the early 2000s, and we were very concerned about the children that were sitting in lap-only seatbelts that were in the center seating position that were not using the lap and shoulder belt and the lap and shoulder belt kids that were sitting in the outboard seating positions that were not tall enough to use the seatbelts. So we decided to create a ride safer travel vest that launched in 2004 and it took total control over the upper torso and the lower hips, decreasing the lumbar stress that happened to the body when the body submarines down and under that lap belt. And we have been um, selling several generations since. We are fully certified as a harness under FMVSS 213. In order to certify our products as a harness, we have to test with the lap only seat belt plus the tether. Then we use the belt positioning seats methodology to test with the lap and shoulder belt. And we test with the lap and shoulder belt with and without the tether. So we, and again, we test for a lot of misuses as well, which are over and above what we are required to do. Several years ago, we launched the Generation 5 of the Ride Safer Travel Vest. It uh, took over for the Gen 4. We decided we're going to stay with the Gen 5 for a little while longer because we are continually making improvements on it. So instead of calling it the Gen 6 and starting all over again, we're, I'm just going to tell you about some of the features. When the Ride Safer Travel Vest is used with the lap and shoulder belt, it technically becomes a belt positioning device. So if you are using the tether, it keeps it as a harness as far as the legal definition is concerned. We do recommend that the tether be used at all times simply because of side impact protection. The tether is going to stabilize that child in a far side impact, which is the impact happening on the opposite side of the shoulder belt. It's going to stabilize the child's upper torso a little 
little bit better, but it is not absolutely necessary. As frontal collisions are still the most prevalent in the United States, the shoulder belt is going to take the brunt of the crash forces in a frontal collision and position the, and the lap belt and the shoulder belt together will position the child correctly on the vehicle seat. We have enhanced energy absorption that's built into the entire vest, and this is for additional pat for additional safety. We have padding on the shoulders and on the front of the waistband that absorbs and dissipates the energies of the crash. It prevents the cl um, clavicle and intra abdominal injuries that are caused by the seat belts, and it cause and it prevents any of the soft tissue injuries that we have seen. The tether attachment is is made out of fabric. It is no longer made out of metal. We decided to go with a fabric reinforced or a reinforced fabric loop because we wanted to make sure that the metals weren't getting hot that close to the child's face. So instead of covering them up, we just decided to make them out of fabric. They are as strong, they are very, very strong and they will work for all children from the all the way up to 110 pounds with the lap and shoulder belt up to 60 pounds is what we allow with the single tether. And then after, after 60 pounds, we require that our dual tether be used with a lap only seat belt. With the lap and shoulder belt, you can continue to use the single tether. We have deformable metal seat belt guides that are on the shoulders and on the lap. The reason for the for the deformable guides is so that it's easy to slip the seat belt in. And in case of an emergency and in case of rapid egress, you can just unbuckle the seat belt and you can yank it open. You don't have to take the entire uh, vest off in order to get the child out in case of an emergency. We have so adjustable shoulder belt guides that we have improved with this in the past six months that have a lot more adjustability than we had before. We have also enhanced the design of that front flap so that if the shoulder belt isn't going just perfectly across the center of the chest, you can adjust it with the opposite shoulder belt flap as well. We have a metal um, uh, aircraft grade metal hook locking system on the front as opposed to the dual ring locking system that we had in the generation four. Honestly, we have had absolutely no complaints with this system. So maybe we have solved that puzzle, no pun intended, of the children being able to get in and out by themselves when you teach them or not being able to get it, not being able to come out if you don't want them to. So just plain don't teach them. We have even more adjustability in the shoulder strap length with the current vest models than we have had before. And we include the neck pillow. For now, we're including the neck pillow for comfort with all of the models of the Ride Safer Travel Vest. But since so few of our customers are using it, I think with the next several months or in the next several months, we're going to start discontinuing including that. So it, it, I'm not entirely sure which direction we're going in. So if you do end up working with someone that has purchased one that didn't get the neck pillow, just reach out to me and I'm going to see if we can include that as an accessory that we can ship afterwards if we decide to discontinue that. The tether and the crotch strap will continue to be shipped with the vest. In January of 2022, we launched the Extra Small Vest, and this is what the big buzz has been all about on the social media pages. I want you to understand that we do not intend for this to be a replacement for car seats. We are very firm believers in that all children should remain rear-facing for as long as possible to, to a minimum of two years old, and they should remain in a harnessed child seat for as long as possible, but to a minimum of four years old. The reason that we created the extra small vest is twofold. Number one, we have a huge following in cities that are very large where parents primarily take ride shares and taxi cabs and they really seriously don't want to carry a car seat or a booster seat around with them for the entire day of being out and about in the city. We created it for those people who travel on airplanes who are having a hard time 
taking several kids and several car seats on the airplane, even though we do recommend that car seats be used on the airplane. And we have developed it because we are still continuing to work with the Federal Aviation Administration on certification for aircraft. Unfortunately, we're kind of in a holding pattern with that one, and that pun was intended. But um, I'll, be, I'll be happy to clarify that for you if you would like. So the extra small vest is from 22 pounds until 40 pounds. We did test it with, um, with the nine-year-old and one-year-old crash test dummy to be able to get that low end. We're very happy with the performance of it. However, we do not permit any children less than two years old to sit in it. Our instruction manual is available on our website if you would like to download that. It does have very stern instructions and very stern warnings that a parent or a responsible person should be sitting next to this two-year-old or three-year-old. And children less than, less than about three to four years old should use the belt positioning booster with it. It's not for performance, it's for pre-crash positioning because these kiddos are just not able to focus on the fact that they have to sit with their bottoms at the, toward the back of the vehicle seat and remain that way. They have a tendency to scoot down and under, even with the tether, they scoot down and under. Even with the crotch strap and the tether, they scoot down and under. So there needs to be someone to remind these little kiddos that they need to sit upright. Now, there are some kids that I have had the pleasure of working with that are two years old, little over two years old, who were able to sit upright unassisted and remain that way for the duration of the trip that I was on with them. And that was a period of about 30 minutes. But that I think that that was quite unique. So th there are warnings in there. So please don't misunderstand our intentions here for replacing a car seat or a traditional car seat with a uh, ride safer travel vest. This is simply an alternative, just like everything else that we offer. Another thing that we've redesigned is the expansion panel. The new expansion panel is going to have a crotch strap ring on the front. We didn't realize how many people would have a need for that crotch, for that extension panel. We didn't realize how many children were so wide, but now that they're using it without the crotch strap ring, we're finding that the younger children really need that pre-crash uh, reminder to sit upright. That crotch strap really isn't for positioning, it's just a remind to, reminder to have them sit upright. And it also helps a little bit with keeping the back of the vest down when you're using it with the tether. That just really depends on the vehicle seat configuration. So we've redesigned that, that crotch strap ring expansion panel is going to be available with the next several, within the next several months. I don't have an exact timeline on that yet. We also launched our new booster that is called the Travel Smarter Booster. The Travel Smarter Booster is made out of the same EPP foam that our Delighter Booster was made out of. The difference is that it's much lower profile. So this is about half the height that the last one was. The reason for that is because we found that children end up being way too tall. The older children who are using booster seats end up being way too tall and the tips of their ears go way above the back of the head restraint that's in the vehicle and their head is like within two inches of the vehicle roof in some cases, we decided to go a little bit lower with the booster because the, the Delighter booster was created for the smaller children. It was created for the three-year-olds who really couldn't see out the window. The Travel Smarter booster is much more encompassing between the four-year-olds and the taller kids, the taller, slimmer kids who still need to stay in booster seats. So I want to tell you a little bit about EPP foam. Expanded polypropylene foam is a foam that's not styrofoam. It is not as stiff or fragile as styrofoam. It is very, very sturdy. It has a high resistance to physical and chemical factors. It has um, a property that does not allow for deformation as much as other polypropyl or as other expanded foams. Even at a high impact load from a collision, it's going to stay nice and sturdy, but it is going to, it does 
dissipate the energies of the crash force and it does protect from injury. It also has an antibacterial and fungostatic property, which was very welcome during the COVID times when it's really easy to just spray it down with, uh, with some kind of a um, sanitizing agent and it actually works really well. And it, it's an eco-friendly material that's 100% recyclable. So we decided to continue on with the EPP foams. Now, all of our vests or, or all of our, our uh, Travel Smarter boosters do have cup holders. So as an added bonus, because we can't sell anything in the United States without cup holders. Just wanted to let you know of another change, and that is that all of the Ride Safe for Travel vests are now shipping in, in backpacks that are the same color as the travel vest that they have purchased, but they are still a really good answer for how can I fit three kids in, next to each other in the same car. So what you're looking at here is a little guy that's the, on the left-hand side that has a Ride Safer Travel Vest. He's using our Travel Smarter Booster as well. The one in the center is only using the Ride Safer Travel Vest, and the one on the right-hand side is using just the Travel Smarter Booster. So you can fit three kids next to each other in with a lot of comfort. We also have some new information about laundering. We do now permit laundering in a wash machine. I do have very specific recommendations for you. It should be on the gentle cycle, cool water, but a normal cycle in most wash machines works just fine too. We're just concerned about deformation. Now, the one thing that we did notice when we were doing some testing and washing and wash machines is that that metal aircraft grade hook buckle can cause some damage to the wash machine itself. So we recommend that you put it in a laundry bag so that there's no direct contact between the metals on the vest and the metals on the wash machine. And then we recommend that you put the, the damp vest out into the sunlight and let it air dry. Sunlight is very healing. Sunlight, sunlight is um, very antimicrobial and that's gonna be the best way to sanitize and to clean the vests. There are now the four sizes of the vests. So the four sizes of the vests encompass from 22 pounds over, all the way to 110 pounds with three colors available currently. These are the most three most um, commonly purchased. So these are our most popular covers. And coming soon, we're gonna be, we're gonna be have, uh, launching a combo pack. Now the backpack that you see on the photo here is not the backpack that it's going to be launching with, but the backpack is going to be able to hold the booster seat plus the ride safer travel vest, plus all of the accessories. And we intend for this to be the ultimate traveling gear thing for all children. Again, um, thank you for being here. My name is Vera. My contact information is here and you will also be able to see it at the very end of the presentation. I'm gonna turn it over to Daniela. All right, thank you, Vera. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I've been doing stuff in person lately, so it's, it's you know, different to come back and do stuff virtual, but I'm so glad that we um, are just in that era where we can do both right now, so this is great. Thanks for having me, um, Safe Kids, as well as everyone else for joining and participating. So this is me again. I think pretty much <laughs> Stephanie covered everything. Just um, a couple other other points. Um, I am an I am an engineer. I've been with this. The pro, I'm going on my tenth year with Up a Baby, which is crazy to me. Um, I am a member of the Society of Automotive Engineers and part of the CRS group. And I, as as mentioned by Stephanie, I just recently joined the National Child Passenger Safety Board. However, I'm speaking on behalf of Up a Baby today. Um, but that's been a great honor in being part of and representing my fellow manufacturers on that board. So it's pretty exciting for me and for the company and for all the, hopefully all the other car seat manufacturers. So hopefully I'm a good advocate for them. So I, for those that do not know, um, cause I think I've only shared this at a few conferences, we have our Mesa V2 that is coming out, um, near the end of the summer. So this, we're pretty excited about this. There are no base changes. Again, no base changes. So there are some carrier changes that we have, um, we have done. 
the European belt routing, extended canopy, larger headrest to help with that head roll in the, the, at the point of um, a side, pet, side impact collision. And we have the forward rotation of the car seat of the carrier handle into the vehicle only. I'll show and explain these. Um, I do not have anything on the improved infant insert, but um, it just helps with proper positioning and airway management, and it will go up to approximately 11 pounds. So European belt routing, is it required? So this is it right here. Um, and you'll notice the little blue indicator there indicating the inner manual as well, that blue is referencing seatbelt. So although it's not required, we strongly recommended, re recommend using this method of belt install. Um, if the vehicle belt, belts are all obviously able to accommodate, we do have this as preferred routing in our manual. We have optional routing, which is the standard routing um, also. So there is the option to do both. Um, this is the preferred one right here. And what does it do? So it limits the forward motion of the Mesa V2 in a frontal crash, and it distributes the crash forces along the backside of the carrier. So it's almost like a load leg. With a load leg, it distributes the crash forces down to the floor. With a European belt routing, it almost catches it and distributes it across the backside of the seat. So this video, um, Stephanie, if you could press play, it's not the Mesa V2, but this is just a carrier only install showing European belt routing. And it's great because um, if you, Stephanie, can you run it again? Sorry. <laughs> um, if you can see, it really does catch the seat and limits that forward motion and that possible secondary head impact that can happen with the child stretching outward. So uh, here it's just simply pointing out the benefits of using that added safety feature. I'll just let it finish running here. All right. And then as far as the forward rotation of the carry handle, so this is the position right here. So don't, please don't get it mistaken with the carry position. The carry position is more at a more perpendicular, more at a 90 degree angle relative to the seat. So what this is, is it, first of all, is it required? Yes, we're saying it's required. Regardless if you're using it with or without the base, we would like you to use this. Um, again, an added safety feature. So what does it do? It prevents the child from making contact with the rear vehicle seat back. And the handle and the seat back, they help absorb those crash forces. So that's the idea of it. So that's how we know it in a frontal crash. This also works great in a rearward crash, and I'll explain it kind of in my next slide. And some of these might be familiar to you because I've pulled them from other Up A Baby presentations just because they simply explain things very nicely. So what you can see in this little graph here is on top, it's saying, for example, so 40% of the crashes that occur are frontal crashes. Now these are crashes, this is not about car seat related or anything, this is just crashes. And out of the 40% that occur, 9.5%, there's an, a possible injury that can happen. That's the injury potential right there. I have circled rear. So rear is the second highest crash that can occur. So by 30%. And with rear impact, we're looking at a 4.4% of a possible injury. So the point I'm trying to show you here is a Obviously, frontal crash, that's what that's what the standard is for all car seat manufacturers across the board. So this all makes sense, right? Because uh, frontal crashes are the highest crashes that occur. So that's why we have the FMVSS 213, which is a frontal crash. So I'm saying for rebound forces into the seat back, a carry handle rotated in that forward position like I, sh like I showed you here. This is great to absorb those crash forces in a frontal crash. However, in a rear crash, they are great as well because what happens is everything moves toward point of impact first. So in a rear impact crash, the car seat is gonna rotate into the vehicle seat back first. So having that handle that way is going to help absorb the crash forces also in a rear impact. So this right here, they on um, the axes, um, the X and the Y axis, and if you're familiar with that, that's kind of technical. Great if you are. If not, it's not the end of the world. I'm all I'm saying is avoid what the X and the Y axis show you. 
what I really want you to pay attention to is if you were to overlap these two graphs, they're pretty similar. So in the front one, we have upon impact, right? You have that deep, that big dive up or that big spike up. And then we have the little one down below, about 120 to 130, you see a little bump. Those are your rebound crashes. So in a car seat crash, rebound is one third of the applied force, which is the, the, the first impact that happens. So in the rear impact, you can see, I don't know what happened here with this little spike here at about 50, but if this were to draw, be drawn smoothly, it is similar to, again, point of impact, rear impact first, you have that impact first, which would be this big hill, and then you have a little bump as well. So it's just the point is, is they are very similar when you're looking at the crash dynamics and the kinematics of a crash. The Alta Belt Positioning Booster. <clears throat> now this is out in the market right now from 40 to 100 pounds, 38 up to 57 inches. We are doing our due diligence on our end, which I know you are doing on your end as well, to educate to use this seat at a five years old, six years old, really that elementary school age, the first grade, because we want the maturity there. And it's all about having the top of the ears contained. So this has side impact absorbing pods. That's what these things are poking out on the side. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a little bit of a frog. These little, these little pods are, it's a conical feature. So it's a cone-like feature made out of a special foam, similar to the EPP foam that Vera spoke to you about in her presentation. So it's an energy absorbing foam. So point of impact happens there first. It's designed like the front crumple zone of a vehicle to absorb there rather than distributing them to the occupant. It is a high back booster only. Um, we, we at Upper Baby have decided um, at this point, we really want to ensure that proper belt placement and it has an, an, excuse me, an energy response headrest. So multiple layers of foam in there where if you really squish them, their rebound features are kind of slow. Those are those energy absorbing properties that are happening again. And then we have our lap belt positioner, which I will get into in a further slide. And here it is. So do you need to use this lap belt positioner with your child? The answer is no. However, we really would like you to use it. Um, it is has an adjustment to, a, to accommodate 40 to 100 pounds. And obviously the differences in the height and the positioning of, of a child's pelvis. But what this does is it really keeps the child in place properly, that lap belt especially, and it helps prevent that submarine that can happen where the belt rides up and can cause possible abdominal injuries. I know Vera spoke about this a bit. I think it was one of her, the first video she showed us about how that belt can ride up. And really, we want that belt to remain on the hard points of a child's body. So we do have a rigid latch system. In this top photo on the right, you can see there's a little arrow there. That's letting you know that by pulling that gray handle forward, that whole, there's a carriage that scoots out the back, back end. And what happens is, is those little connectors, they, um, or they're rigid connectors, but they actually are on some, a, a pivot. So they pivot 180 degrees and would attach it to the vehicle. By pulling that gray handle and scooting the booster back toward the vehicle seat back, it will also shift to get that good contact point between your seat back and the back of the booster seat as well. There are little indicators on the um, latch connectors. You can see they're red right now. When they are attached, they are green. To unattach them, there's just little triggers on there. You would just pull those back and it would release. So I know in our world, we've always talked so much about how this is a great tool to keep, keep the car seat or the booster in place and prevent it from being a, a projectile. However, we, I really love to educate about the fact that this is also a pre-crash positioner. It puts that booster in place so it'll help keep that child in place. And what I'm referring to is especially, I know you all know it, um, when you take corners, and the child shifts or shifts with the car seat because obviously their weight shifts um, with the car seat. So um, that helps kind of just prevent some of that movement and keep everything aligned properly. 
So the Knox convertible car seat, so rear facing 14 to 45 pounds. We have the fit inlay up to approximately 25. It's a two piece design just to help with the proper positioning of a child. So the bottom piece boosts a child up for back piece pushes a child forward and it's up to 49 inches. Um, we have those side impact pods again. So same concept, putting it here. We have the smart secure system, which I'm going to show you in the next slide. It's just structured a little differently than the current Mesa. It has a no rethread harness. There really is EPP throughout the whole seat. It is sandwiched right through to help with that side impact. There's one crotch buckle position. And then this little green thing on the bottom is choroid. So that is a special material that came from the aerospace technology area and or industry, I should say. And you can also find it in bike helmets. So it's a tubular design that's kind of welded to, together and it's, it's plastic, but it's designed similar to a front crumple zone again, where upon impact and a frontal crash, it's designed to absorb those crash forces there. So that if you're wondering what that is, that's what it is. So our smart secure system, if you're familiar with the Upper Baby Mesa, acts just a little differently. It still has that smart secure, um, it doesn't have a ratcheting latch anymore, but in this system, it does have the tension indicator and it promotes seatbelt use. So how you install is your lap belt would go, if here you're looking at the rear facing belt path, blue. Your lap belt goes under. In the forward facing belt path, where you see the circle, that is red. So your lap belt would go behind the plate. Your shoulder belt routes over the plate and under both of those tensioning clips. If you miss one of the tensioning clips, um, the one that is extremely critical to always route through is retractor side. But we are now educating just to route through both of them, just to take out the guesswork because we all know not every caregiver in person understands which where what retractor side is and um, whatnot. So that's for, for that effort. But big thing to, to note is in this case, the tension indicator is a guide. So there are a lot of angles as you're all familiar with being car seat technicians in vehicles. So there's cushion angles are different, back angles are different. Um, even where the D-ring is and where the buckle is and where, where the retractor routes through. On top of the fact of you have recline positions on the knocks, they all play a role in where the lap belt sits underneath that tensioning plate. So the lap belt will get triggered. It may not get triggered 100%, but you are supposed to be checking in the belt path and locking the retractor as well. Those are checkpoints too. So all of those are all part of um, our checkpoints and are outlined in our videos as well as in our manual. So the multi-directional tether, this is multi-directional because it's used rear and forward facing. Again, strongly suggested for use. I get asked why in some cases. We say for rear, it's strongly suggested because it can still be used if for some reason you cannot reach the top tether location because you'll notice it's going to an improved top tether location. It's not going forward to that front vehicle seat. Forward facing, we say the same thing simply because there are, if you're familiar with the latch manual, which I'm sure most of you are, there is a spreadsheet in there that, or chart that outlines vehicle manufacturers that do not permit you using the tether past 65 pounds as well. So just in an effort to have that cohesiveness, um, we obviously would love you to use it, but those are the reasons why. So this acts similar to a load leg situation. Same thing as European belt routing, instead of going down to the floor, it's th this, this um, strap, what it does is their tether, it catches the seat and distributes them along the back side of the car seat. It's yellow to bring awareness to it. Safe Kids' of study says 64% of children, not children, sorry, caregivers don't use the top tether. This is our way of saying, hey, look at me, find out what I do, okay? And then, okay, so this is something just to show you why you should use the tether. And these are just screenshots of a test that we performed. So on the left-hand side, you can see, this is your starting position, far left. And then in the green, the second slide, that is um, with, so one has with the tether, one has without. 
So you're going to look at these directly on the white side, on, yeah, on the white side, where you have on the left side, on the white side, that is without the tether, and the other one is with the tether. So what we are saying here is it allows the seat to remain more upright and distribute those crash forces more evenly along the backside of the seat. Otherwise, the more vertical that the car seat would get in, um, in that forward rotation obviously puts more stress and strain on the child's head, neck, shoulder area. So again, we pass regulation using both of them. If you do use it, we strongly suggest you to use it. Um, this is a visual telling you why. Um, and yeah, so I, I thought this was a great visual to kind of throw in here just to explain things a little further about using that tether. And another thing to point out is you can see that it also reduces the forward motion during a crash, crash so that secondary head impact that can happen, whether that is with the seat to the front vehicle seat or it's with the child sliding upward and outward, right, with the stretch of the belt. Um, so that's where that one inch rule really comes in play. This is why. So this is another visual letting you know that this is a possible secondary head impact that could happen, um, or even secondary impact with the car seat that can happen in a crash. So multi-directional tether can route either way through the guide. It is recommended to route on the opposite side of where you are loading the child in. Please reference your vehicle, um, vehicle seat manual on what they recommend as well. If we have adjustable headrests, we're saying to route between the headrests. If you are rear facing, if you're forward facing, we say to route on the same side, kind of the corner or the shoulder where the headrest comes down. And that's again, an integrated headrest that does not adjust. Forward facing, it um, would route between the, the um, headrest posts and down, and then an integrated one would be up and over. So again, reference please your vehicle owner's manual to see what they say to follow as well. Um, storage, this is how it's stored. My point in showing you this is again, to bring awareness to it. It's not stored in a compartment, so parents will look at it. And any excess webbing must be stored, whether in use or not in use. There's that little piece of Velcro fabric on the back there, it's sewn on. All you do is roll it up and then Velcro it to the, to the tether itself. All right, so this is just another visual for you, letting you know without and with the um, tether and the difference there. So with the tether is on the right, you can see that forward motion of the top motion of the seat as well as the occupant. So huge difference and benefit looking at left to right when you use the tether and you don't use the tether. Some other important NOx information, inflatable belts are not permitted. Harness pads are optional. Rear facing tether does not introduce more, more rotation. I get that quite a bit. And truck routing is also permitted. We do allow the front contact with the seat as long as the vehicle manufacturer permits that method of install. Okay, um, we all know about those sensing units in, in that seat, but um, again, we, it has to be permitted by them and it cannot affect install. All right, something else that's in, unconventional, the bottom of the ears of the Knox, because we really are aware of how the head rolls in a side impact, we are saying that regardless of rear facing or forward facing, the bottom of those ears, the headrest ears, can sit directly on the child's shoulders or up to an inch from the child's shoulders. Again, for rearward and forward facing. So just pointing that out. Rear facing, it's about that head containment. So one inch from the top of the headrest when it's in its highest position. Forward facing, it's about having those top, the top of the ears contained. Mesa, just to throw something in quick. And I, I know this might be really repetitive, but I see this in about, honestly, I think upward of 70% of our customer vehicles now. We see this design feature in a lot of vehicles, um, and this is a little trick with the Mesa. So we are saying what happens is, is the recline, recline foot on the Mesa winds up interfering with that wedge. So you don't get a good contact between your vehicle seat back and the base of your Mesa. So, and when you go to adjust the recline foot to get your recline indicator all green, like in step four, what happens is it adjusts up in an arc. 
So if you have to get it all green and have to adjust it full up, it might pull further away from the seat back. We are telling you to use a rolled hand towel from a bathroom. It seems to be the right amount of thickness. Um, you can use a couple towels if you want to roll them. Not a washcloth or a dish towel seems, doesn't seem to be bulky enough, but place that as you can see here. So in that top gap, even with the top of the base, step two, after you install, you should have it green on top. Step three, check your belt path. Step four, go back and check your recline indicator to ensure you're still green. And the final step would be to make sure you're making contact with the, with the vehicle seating surface. If that towel is not there, what happens is, is the top of the Mesa base pulls into the seat back to make contact, which is great, but it sometimes will lift up the front of the base off the cushion, which we don't want. We want contact to happen in all surfaces. And this, these are my children. We, along with um, Safe Traffic Systems, we are proud members of the MACPS. This is my contact information. We have discounts on the Knox and the Alta right now if you're interested. So please shoot me an email and I'm going to hand it off to Steph. Perfect. Well, thank you both very much for your presentations. That was great. And on the slide here, we're going to leave this up during question time just so that you have both Vera and Danielle's information if you wanted to write that down so that you have not only their phone number but their email as well. And we do have quite a few questions. So um, Vera, first of all, Megan was wondering, is the ride safer more equivalent to a belt positioning booster as opposed to a harness car seat? When the Ride Safer Travel Vest is used with a lap and shoulder belt without the tether, it's more equivalent to a belt positioning booster. But once you add the tether into the entire equation, it acts much more like a five-point harness system. Okay, great. And then also for you, um, Vera, Emily is wondering, can the booster be used alone without the vest? And what are the weight heights and the, and the width limits of the booster? The, um, the answer is yes, all of the above. You can use the booster with the vest or without the vest, and you can use the vest with or without the booster. So the booster seat dimensions, I can't remember what the outer dimensions are, but the inner dimension is 10 inches. So that's going to be hip bone to hip bone where the child is sitting. It's 10 inches. The weight limitation is... Um, excuse me, 40 to 100 pounds when it's used without the vest. Age requirement is four years old and up. Now, when you introduce the vest into the entire system, the vest weight and height trumps the booster seat weight and height. Okay, very good. That was a good question. Um, Daniela, the Abby is wondering, can the Alta be used with a sewn latch plate? Um, she looked at the manual online when she was looking at boosters and it wasn't in the prohibited section, but she didn't find it in the examples of allowed either. Yes, um, the answer would probably be no. I can double check. Um, Abby, can you shoot me an email and then I can get you the um, confirmed response from our R&D group. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Car seat at APA or Daniela with two L's. Perfect. That's great. Yeah. And if any, if anyone else has that, uh, same question, go ahead and shoot Daniela that. Yes, that please. Yep. Well. Yeah. That's great. Um, Vera, what is the price point for the ride safer vests? The extra small ride safer vest is 169. The small and the large are 165, and the extra large is 229. And I just measured the booster seat. It has an outside dimension of 14 inches. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Did you have a measuring tape there, Vera? I do. Nice. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And then a question that I have actually, Vera, is, is there a technician discount program? Uh, we do have some, we do have a couple of distributors that offer discount programs. So just please email me and I'll get you in touch with them. Okay, perfect. 
And then a couple of people, Vera, had asked about if you could talk a little bit about the um, locking clips use with the Delighter and the Travel Smarter boosters. Are they still required on the new boosters as well? That was a very um, narrow margin of boosters that went out of our warehouse. There were like less than 20 of them that went out of our, our warehouse that were tested with the locking clip and the instruction manual actually said to use the locking clip. We are not requiring that. We do have an alternate method of securing the child without the need for that locking clip. And that is to put the shoulder belt over the top of the armrest as opposed to underneath the armrest. The reason for that is we were seeing during um, frontal crashes, we were seeing that that shoulder belt sometimes in some situations slipped up a little bit too high and we wanted to keep it down a little bit lower. So we've just put an alternate method of routing instead of using the locking clip. I apologize about that locking clip thing. I was kind of hoping nobody would know about it, but it is what it is. Very good. Daniela, Isabella is wondering, are, are you able to get a second cup holder for the upper baby Knox or is that not an option? Oh, like an accessory? Yeah. Um, I would say yes. Um, I'm not, I'm pretty sure there, there is. I, unfortunately, I don't deal with um, warranty products or accessories, but um, if you would email support at upababy.com you could definitely um, grab one. The only thing I would mention is sometimes depending on your vehicle, if you do use two and try to close the door, you might damage the one on the side of the door. But again, it depends on your vehicle. So, um, but I would email support at upababy.com if you would like another one. Okay, and I think Isabella that answered your question. Yep, she put in the chat. Thank you. So oh, okay, great. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, Vera, how easy, convenient? Lindsay is wondering: Is the ride safer for everyday use in a family-owned vehicle as their primary restraint? So in and out multiple times a day, moving to different seating positions within the family's vehicle, things like that. It's actually very, very simple. What I recommend to our multiple, we have a lot of families that use the Ride Safer vest on a daily basis. What I recommend is that you put the Ride Safer travel vest kit in a seating location that has a top tether anchor and then leave the vest in the car attached with the top tether anchor and then teach the child how to put their arms through on each side like a regular article of clothing and then buckle themselves and how to snug it up around the waist and then teach them how to put the lap and shoulder belt through those belt guides after they've buckled in. It's actually very, very easy to do. And I have reports from many our, of our customers that children as young as three and a half are able to do this all by themselves. However, we do recommend some adult supervision here just to make sure that the kid gets buckled in correctly each and every time. The benefit of the vest staying in the car also is for rapid egress when you get to school. So when you have that 12 seconds to drop your kid off, kiddo can be unbuckled and out of the car in that allotted amount of time that you have to drive up curbside. Wonderful. And we do have uh, more questions and we have time yet. So I'll, I'll keep bringing these at you. Um, Daniela, are there any plans to make the lap belt positioner removable from the booster for families who may choose not to use it? At the moment, no, there's not just because of the added safety feature of it. Um, yeah, unfortunately, no. <laughs> okay. Doesn't mean it won't change, but at the moment, no. Okay. And it is adjustable though. All right, perfect. Um, Daniela, also Jessica's wondering, is the Mesa V2 completely replacing the original Mesa and will the Mesa no longer be available? Uh, I probably over a period of time, perhaps, um, but, but yes. Okay. And then this, this would be for either of you. Um, Kimberly is just wondering, does every state allow the European belt routing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know of any that don't. Okay, perfect. It, I think it's a matter of whether or not the, the length will work around the, the carrier itself, depending on, on the um, manufacturer. Okay. 
Um, just to clarify what, what we just said, uh, sure. the, the laws in the individual states do not specify how to install car seats and what methodologies are used to install car seats. All 50 states of the U.S. require compliance with U.S. Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard 213. So as long as the product meets a category within FMVSS 213 and meets the regulatory requirements of performance, and labeling in FMVSS 213, it is legal. Great, thank you for that clarification, that's great. Um, Daniela, Andrea is wondering, is the forward position necessary for the current MESA or just the V2? So it's just on the V2. On the current MESA, it cannot rotate forward. It only stops at that carry handle, that carrying position. If we have any Canadian friends on, um, over in Canada, there is a rebound requirement that's part of their regulation. So the Canadian Mesa carry handle does rotate forward like that. But moving forward, um, the V2 is the only one in the U.S. that has the, you know, on, of a, up a baby product, I should clarify, rotating um, forward to that forward position for rebound. All right, and then also Megan is wondering, um, will the Mesa and the Mesa V2 be interchangeable with the bases? Yep, yeah, so there's no change no change to the base. So you could use the carrier on both. Okay, perfect. And then Vera, would the Travel Smarter Booster work for the younger children or should they still use the Delighter? No, it is. The Delighter Booster is no more, so we only have one distributor that has a couple of them left in stock. It is being entirely replaced with the Travel Smarter Booster. All right. Um, and then Melissa, Daniela, is the Mesa Base Towel Trick posted to the website FAQs to help assure caregivers that it isn't non-approved? Yes, yep, it is. It's on there. And there's actually a PDF you, you can hit under the FAQ to download yourself and just have it on hand uh, at car seat events, or even if you'd like to download it and send it to a, a customer or client of yours too. Okay. And then um, Paul was wondering, and I believe this is for you here, Vera, that the vests are not FAA certified. Is that is that true? They are not approved by the FAA. The FAA doesn't actually certify anything. So it's a matter of approval. The reason that they're not approved is because there's a code of federal regulations that prohibits vests or harnesses for being installed onto aircraft seat. The CARES harness, which is the child aviation restraint system does have an exemption. And that what we, that's exactly what we are working toward also. But we are not quite approved yet because no one within the FAA field offices can find the test fixture on which we are supposed to test. So unless, until that is determined, we're kind of in a holding pattern with the, with the continuation of the process. Okay. And then just a encouragement um, um, for manufacturers to think about and if you have thoughts on this, developing higher weight limits for booster seats um, in Washington, the law requires a booster to four foot nine, and there's a lot of children under that height, but over 120 pounds. Either one of you have any thoughts or comments for that? Yes, absolutely. So the higher the weight limit is on the belt positioning booster, the bigger the crash test dummy is that we need to use. Now, I know that Up a Baby and Safe Traffic System both use the 105 pound fifth percentile female to be able to test up to 110 or 100, anywhere between 100 and 120 pounds. Or anything over 120 pounds will not be able to be tested with that 105 pound crash test dummy. We would need to jump to the 50th percentile male ATD, which is 175 pounds. And there is no way to create a width on the booster seat to be able to accommodate the 175 pound um, male crash test dummy and be able to fit it into a vehicle. And it's hugely expensive. And we're now we're also talking about elevation from the vehicle seat. And yeah, it's yeah. not going to allow for the tips of the ears of that 105 pound crash test dummy to be below the, uh, the top of the vehicle seat. 
Daniela, you want to add anything? No, I think you hit everything that I was going to mention. I was going to mention like just the, the height perspective too. So it, it's, a, it's a tough one um, because of, and, and, I, and we're probably, so a lot of children, as you guys know, Oak Row car seats and boosters in height before weight. So really it, it is about the height and, you know, it's all part of our best, best practices in our curriculum, um, you know, but I, unfortunately, yeah, I, I'll, I will bring it back to, to our group at our office. I know we are aware there are some boosters out there that do go to 120 pounds, but, um, you know, know that I, I understand your concern, but there are limitations as well that Vera went over. Very good. Well, we're just about at our time limit, and I just want to give both of you a chance if there were any other closing thoughts that you had for our participants before we end. Keep doing you and keep doing a great job out there. And please continue to reach out to us. I know I get a ton of people that reach out with questions or concerns or situations they've run across, come across. I know Vera does too. I just think keeping that communication open between us and you, because really it is, it's an important relationship. And I know that we deem it as a very important relationship too. So thank you, all of you and Stephanie too, for putting this on. And from safe traffic system perspective, your opinions really mean a lot to us as well. So please keep in touch with me. A lot of the product improvements that we have done have been based on technician feedback. So please keep doing it. We love hearing from you and keep rocking the way you do. You are absolutely the pivotal point and key in keeping children safe out there.